Go project structure and project layout are a very hot topic in the Go community because there isn't really a one clear answer, one clear guide on how you can spin up and structure new projects. There's videos uh, obviously by myself, by Anthony GG, Golang Dojo that explain, you know, and suggest ways of how you can structure your project. There's also a very popular uh, repository, Golang Standards Project Layout with 46,000 stars, which is seen as kind of like the answer and the rule book of how to structure your Go project with lots of great, you know, pieces of information with explanations of every folder and every directory. However, Russ Cox was on the core Golang team actually made an issue on this exact same project layout back in April 9th of 2021 saying the readme makes clear that this is not official, but even the claim it is a set of common historical and emerging project layout patterns in the Go ecosystem is not accurate. For example, the vast majority of packages in the Go ecosystem do not put the importable package in a PKG subdirectory. More generally, what is described here is just a very complex and Go repos tend to be much simpler. So this is kind of from the one of the main people who helped build Go saying, hey, yeah, this Go project is nice, but it's really not the way Way you should do things. So that puts a lot of things into perspective. And again, we're going back into the topic of no one really has a clear answer of how to do things, which is why I want to discuss a project that I had built with the help of the great community called Go Blueprint. It's at uh, 2000 stars. So this is also kind of a celebratory video looking at the success and the community feedback of this project. It's been very well received, so I appreciate all of that. But essentially, Go Blueprint is the ultimate Golang Blueprint library. Go Blueprint is a CLI tool that allows users to spin up a Go project with the corresponding structure seamlessly. And if you don't really know what that means, there's actually a website called go-blueprint.dev. And here, you can actually pick what you want in your Go project. So if you want a database, we have options for MySQL, Postgres, SQLite, and MongoDB. There's a few frameworks that we kind of allow Chi, Echo, Fiber, Gin, Gorilla, HTTP routers. And we actually even have an advanced flag, which I'll show later on in this video of how you can actually have HTML support with Temple, CI CD workflows using GitHub Actions, and even a WebSocket implementation. And down below, there's a UI that shows you the project structure. So let's say we can name this like test project. And then let's say we want for our database Postgres and you want Chi. And it actually shows you the command to write in your CLI after you have Go Blueprint downloaded and what the project structure will look like. All right, so I made my terminal here a little bit bigger. And the first thing I would like you to do is paste the go install command to get the latest version of go blueprint. So at the time of recording, the latest version is 0.5.12 updated about three weeks ago, again, from the time of recording. So after successfully downloading go blueprint, it actually going to bind to your path. So now you have the command go blueprint available. So what you can do is go dash blueprint create. And if you do this, it's actually going to start a CLI interactive project that will walk you through the steps of what you want. Now, what's the name of your project? Let's just say hello, YouTube. And then we can pick what framework do you want to use in your Go project? We give the standard library, Chi, Jin, Fiber, Gorilla, HTTP router and Echo. I personally like Chi, so let's go ahead and click Chi. And then what database driver do you want to use in your Go project? With a few options here, even Redis. Let's go ahead with Postgres, click yes, and it's going to prepare the project. And as you can see, if we open up this, we now have our CMD directory with our main .go. Let me minimize this. It has our internal directory with our database logic here and database.go. It has a server with our routes defined using Chi, and it has a bunch of other good things. It even comes with a tests folder, an air toml for a hot reloading, and just an example.env file that hosts everything you need for you know your local development using Go Blueprint. And a nifty thing is if you are going to use the database flag, we actually will give you a Docker Compose, which you can do Docker Compose up, and it'll spin up a local database instance using Docker. This is in particular using Postgres. And then you can actually connect with main.go to your database. And I almost forgot to mention, we actually also include a make file. And this make file has a lot of cool things. You can do make Docker run. So go ahead and let's see that Docker run. So seed into the project. And then you can do something like make Docker run. And this is actually going to pull up pull the image for you and it's going to run a local Postgres instance using Docker. And while this is going to be important, you can see here 
now we have our Docker instance running. We can actually make a new terminal and then we can do a make build, which is going to build our application. But if you just want to run, you can do make run. And now that you have the actual Docker instance running, you can actually run the make run command and it's going to run the instance. And now you have a working Go server running that's connected to your Postgres database. So that's a really good kind of basic implementation, but now I want to kind of explore the advanced flag and the advanced flag is pretty similar to the casual or the regular flow we just went through. So if I go again, go blueprint and just to show, I have nothing in this director. I deleted the last project we spun up. You can do go blueprint, go dash blueprint, create, and can do the advanced flag. And now you can see that you are in advanced mode and it's the setup is going to be primarily the same, but there's going to be an option at the end that asks you if you want HTMX, do you want CICD actions or even want web sockets. So what's the name of your project? Let's go advanced. Hello, YouTube. Let's just go with just chi again let's do postgres and then which advanced feature do you want htmx temple go project workflow or a web socket endpoint let's go ahead with the web socket endpoint and you're gonna go ahead and prepare all of that for us may take a little bit more time and there you go and actually give us a tip repeat the equivalent blueprint with the following non interrupt command so this is again a feature that we have that if you don't want to go through this entire cli you can actually short form the direct command which will spin up this entire project for you yeah and here you can see the uh, main difference in the routes that go we now have this web socket handler with a few specific functions to manage the web socket. You got an endpoint to see the actual handler. So a lot of cool things. This project this open source project offers for people who are interested in learning Go, but don't necessarily know on how to structure a project or just need a little bit of like a, a template, like create React app or a create T3 app equivalent in the Go world. And if you have any questions about how any of this works more in detail, we actually have a docs.go-blueprint.dev website, which highlights all of the kind of installation, the actual UI, everything that goes forward with how the Go Blueprint is made and the drivers, the frameworks that we choose, all of that is explained in detail in the docs. Uh, links for all of this will be in the description down below. So with all that being said, make sure you go visit Go Blueprint on GitHub. Give it a start. It's greatly appreciated. Let me know what you all think of this. Do you like it? Have you used it? Are there any issues? Do you have a PR that you want to implement? But it's been a lot of fun getting this project to 2000 stars. Big shout Shout out to everyone who worked on this, Brian and UJ and everyone else who put up many, many different PRs and all the people gave feedback. Much appreciated. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you like this kind of video, comment, like, and subscribe for more. But as always, stay coding, bruh, and you got to power it. Boom.